going to show you how to terminate a TAP6 cable. Um, just a few important things you need to remember. Got a uh, couple of pool noodles nailed up here on the wall. Um, they're simulating the twist in the pair, um, full twist of the cable. Each wire takes its turn of, in theory, being closer to the source of electromagnetic interference, whether it be a field created by another pair in the cable, an outside source of radiation, whatever, doesn't really matter. The twisting basically means that the cable is balanced, so whatever interference is induced in one wire is induced in the other, cancels each other out. From what I've seen, the wire cable hail when it comes time for certification is you remove too many twists in the back of the jack, or the jack itself is not a CAT6 or whatever specification you're trying to um, have a cable certified to. Next thing, separation. You want to maintain when you run the cable 50 mil from your power, or it's got to be insulated by either a durable, um, non-conductive material, like a conduit, um, or put it on the other side of the stud, or you can use metal as long as it's bonded to earth. Um, when it comes to time to do your termination though, you've got to be more than 150 mil from a um, power outlet. And the third thing, when you do your termination, just keep your cable as close to the back of the jack, like the sheath cut, as close to the back of the jack as you can. In terms of tools, you're not going to need much for this one. Punch down tool, cutters, you get a jack, or a um, Quetzal compatible, um, just a Cat 6 jack, and I um, just into a Quetzal wall plate because that'll match what is used in the house. Right, so you've got a bit of cable, get your cutters, snip around it. Be careful not to cut too deep, get it into your uh, conductors, strip it up. Right. Just check you haven't hit any of your conductors around there. Yeah, there's a bit of cord in there that you can use to strip the wire back if you have hit one. Um, get rid of that if you haven't. Then next thing you need to do is a bit of a divider inside the cable there, which keeps your wires away from each other. Basically helps the structure of the cable. Um, one end of your cable will terminate easier than the other. You've got in the back of the jack, it'll say in there an A and a B type termination. Use the A. Um, for the most part, people that terminate the B type termination, um, they're stuck in the past. It's left over from other technologies that that was the way they terminated the jacks. The only time you'd use an A and a B is if you're making a patch cord that's a crossover cable. But if you're making a patch cord, you're wasting your time as well. You can buy them so cheap online that it's not worth your time and effort. By the time you pay for materials and your time to make a cord, just go buy one. Next thing, don't use patch cords in your wall and don't use them through connectors in your wall plates. If you're doing that, you're not gonna. It's just a waste of time as well. Um, it's not hard to do this, just do it. Right, eh? You only want to have about 40 mil. Otherwise, you'll be spending all day undoing your twists. Lay your wire out. Sort of start at one end. Get it done down there and uh, move on to the next bit. Make sure you're maintaining your twists. Yeah. Sheath right up in there while you do it. Keep your twists in there as tight as you can as well. Terminate that off.
is, is that with these uh, jacks, they come with a little stuffer block there. You can use that to terminate your wires, but I wouldn't do that just because the tool is cheap. You're going to get a better termination, so just go buy the tool. You might get a tool for 15 bucks. Why would you waste your time doing this and have a possibility of getting bad termination? Bang, clip it in, turn it, shake a little bit of wire out on the floor, stick it on the wall. Easy as that. Thanks for watching. If you want to uh, subscribe, I'd appreciate it. Watch some of the other videos if you'd like. Thanks.